The climate crisis affects us all, and we all have the power to help solve it. The science community all around the world has been telling us for a long time we have to, yes, but let's take a look at why. The sky is a very thin shell of atmosphere surrounding the planet, and we're putting into that thin space 110 million tons of man-made global warming pollution every 24 hours, and it's building up and it's trapping heat. The energy from the sun comes in the form of light, and it warms up the planet, and then that heat energy is re-radiated back into space, and some of it is caught by the natural greenhouse gas layer, and that's a good thing but we're making that layer much thicker so more of the outgoing infrared is being trapped and that's what is driving the temperatures up. And there are many causes of uh, man-made global warming pollution. Agriculture is a part of it and the management of forests and transportation, uh, but the main part of it uh, is the burning of fossil fuels which provides more than 80% of all the energy the world uses. As a result, all this heat's being trapped and the air temperature's going up quite dramatically. Uh, and this is uh, causing record-breaking years. 16 of the 17 hottest years ever measured with instruments have been since 2001. But on a global basis, more than 90% of all this extra heat energy is going into the oceans and they're heating up pretty rapidly. And this makes the ocean-based storms like hurricanes and typhoons and cyclones stronger and more destructive. And it also disrupts the water cycle because the water vapor coming off the oceans is increasing very significantly as the oceans warm. And th that's carried over the land and falls in much bigger precipitation events, both rain and snow. So we get these record downpours and that leads to record flooding. And the same extra heat that's disrupting the water cycle and making the downpours bigger is sucking the moisture out of the soil and making the droughts deeper and longer and more destructive. And when the land dries out, the vegetation dries out, and that means when the temperature goes up, fires increase. Now we have these mega fires. Now, same heat is also melting the ice in Antarctica and here in Greenland. This is a huge glacier in the last century and completely melted now. And all that extra melting is raising sea level. The Department of Defense in the U.S. has long warned about refugee crises connected to the climate crisis and pandemic diseases and water shortages and food shortages. Where food is concerned, the extra heat stress is now beginning to decrease crop yields. It's also a medical emergency, and with temperatures going up and the climate being disrupted, we're seeing tropical diseases spreading poleward. Of course, the transportation revolution and air travel has a lot to do with this. The biologists are also concerned about the extinction threat. Up to half of all the land-based species with which we share this planet are in danger of extinction, according to the biologists, in this century, unless we make changes. So, do we have to change? Yes, we do. But fortunately, every hour, the Earth gets as much energy from the sun to supply all of the energy the entire global economy uses for an entire year. There's an exponential curve with wind power being used all over the world and it could supply 40 times as much uh, electricity as the entire world uses. At the Paris negotiations, virtually every nation in the entire world agreed to phase down greenhouse gas pollution to net zero emissions as early in the second half of this century as possible. And we're seeing marches and demonstrations and demands at the ballot box for the kinds of changes that are needed. So please use your voice and your vote and your choices in the marketplace and in your life like your world depends on it because your world depends on it. Thank you. Thank you.